about whether it's truly possible for microorganisms to save a city is Professor Christian Müller. He's a biologist from the University of Potsdam. Tell us a little bit more about how these artificial organisms can help save a city from sinking. Well, first it might sound far-fetched to save a city by microorganisms, but if you think about the details, the city is already built on wooden materials, which is biomaterial, and it's known that microorganisms can build whole mountains by calcification. So why not combining these two properties and have microorganisms which grow on this wood and protect it? Um, might not be easy, but I think it might be a way to go forward and save the city. Now, synthetic uh, biology isn't really a new thing. The term has been around uh, for a long time. And as we heard in the report, there are a lot of interesting ideas behind it. But what's realistic and what's already being applied? Applied uh, is sort of the gene technology and protein engineering. Uh, for example, we have um, proteins for tumor therapy like antibodies. We have hormones which are used. Um, we use this for bi um, energy generation and biogas. So all these details are made already. The idea is that synthetic biology provides means to do this faster and in a larger scale than it's done already. Now, how far away from we are seeing tailor-made bacteria that can help people in poorer countries combat diseases uh, like malaria? Um, in this case, I think bacteria are mainly used to produce uh, at a lower cost the therapies which are then used. Um, there are bacteria which may be used for other purposes in the environment, but this is always difficult because you have to release in the environment which needs to be strictly controlled. Um, nonetheless, I think we are not that far away from using these, like producing artesamine um, for malaria treatment. What uh, would you say are the, the ethical limits or boundaries when it comes to synthetic biology? First of all, synthetic biology is a technology which is per se not really connected to any um, ethics. But of course, the users and the, the consumers have to think about these limitations. And I think one limit is if you talk about synthetic life, that this is not that synthetic. It's still life and has a sort of higher meaning or uh, value than just organic chemistry. So we have to set limits here and not talk about living machines or so because it's living. It's more than a machine. Now, uh, what happens or what would happen if uh, artificial bacteria created in a laboratory escaped the lab? Well, we have several safety levels here uh, for bacteria. For example, the bacteria we use in the lab normally don't grow outside because they use special nut nutrition which are not available. Um, we have these sort of safety levels and we have the, the laboratory has certain safety levels and typically organisms we use do not cause any harm and if they even if they escape they would die. Now, would you say that uh, synthetic biology will be the science breakthrough of our time? I think it's a major step forward to combine different disciplines and use this in a way like the computers are used today so I suspect a significant growth in the next years. All right, Dr. Christian Müller, thank you very much for joining us here today. Thank you.